Today we're making an elegant rustic glam wreath. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Okay, we're going to start off with some of this. It's like a burlap ribbon with gold snowflakes on it. It's about six, five or six inches wide. I got another piece of sparkly burlap and then some deco mesh from Dollar Tree. An 18 inch wire wreath. Some pipe cleaners. And first we're just going to go ahead and put this together get this out of the way then I'll show you what else we're going to use we're going to start on the inner two rungs and go to each one of those little jointed pieces in the middle and just wrap it around one or two times to hold that in place now you might want to go ahead and jump over that little divider there just to make sure that your pieces don't slide back and forth if you want to do that now you can if not you can do it once you start placing your materials down all the way around here And that was easy enough, right? You might even have an 18 inch wreath that already has the, the pipe cleaners on it and that's fine, you can use that. Um, this will end up with 18 of these little pipe cleaners. So we're up to the top now and in the center, we're gonna wrap those around those outside two pieces. And we're gonna do that all the way around you can use florist wire, you can use pipe cleaners, you can use really any color pipe cleaner because it's going to be hidden in the end. Whatever you have on hand and it's Christmas so I'm using up some of my Christmas materials here. This is my beautiful deer who will be added on here. It's just an ornament that I got at the thrift store. Be sure you follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, so we've got this deco mesh. You can find this in the Christmas and the fall section. And we're gonna lay it right over the top of this ribbon underneath. Then I'm gonna kind of bunch it up or kind of accordion pleat it in my hand. Gonna hold it tightly and go down and find a place to start. I'm starting on the inside because I want that little tail to go inside of my wreath. So I just thought it would be easier to start on the inside section. I'm wrapping that around and you can see how it slides away from it and that's what I mean there. You'll want to wrap that pipe cleaner kind of around that center bar. If you do that, now it won't be pulled up or down. It'll stay right where you put it. Tuck your loose ends down then you're going to take a ruler and go down eight inches and just begin to bunch this. I started off wanting to make 10 inch segments, but I didn't think I was gonna have enough ribbon and I was correct. So I went ahead and changed it and what you're seeing is me doing little eight inch poofs. I'm gonna go back and forth all the way down. So here's eight inches. I first went to the outside. Now I'm gonna pleat it in my fingers and we're gonna go to the inside. just making sure that I have it on tightly. So then you can see here we're on the inside. Don't worry about the gaps on the outside because those will be covered up. These wreaths always look a little gnarly before they look good, but just trust in the process. Go to the outside, do eight inches, pleat it, and then go to the inside. You're just going to cross it over back and forth from the outside to the inside. We're going to zigzag back and forth. I'm going to leave this in so that you can see. See there? A couple of twists will hold it down. Eight more inches. Okay, now once we go all the way around the wreath and we're getting down to our original starting point, I'm going to measure my poof just like we did with the rest of it. Pinch those pieces together and I'm going to cross over right on top of the original piece that I put down. So you can see here and here, I'm going to go right back on top of that first section that we put down and just wrap it tightly around. If you do not wrap wrap these tightly enough when you begin fluffing them and you're going to have to pull these segments apart you'll pull them right out of the out of the frame there and you don't want to do that so save yourself some time and just do it first do it right the first time a little extra effort on the front side end is going to help you in the long run so and there i'm just pressing those tails through there just like so 
Now, I wanted to add some of this. This is like a, mm, it's, I don't, I can't even tell you. It's almost like a plasticky material or some type of a coated fabric mesh that is gold. And I thought, wow, for glam, this is going to be stunning. Plus, there's a lot of highlights in that deer that are bronze and gold. And I thought this would really make it look uh, really nice. So I'm just going to loop this over back and forth. Same process. Start on the outside, move inward. Now, the difference here is I'm not going to use a measuring device on these. What I'm doing is looping them over so that it sits right on top of the other one. If you do that, then the little poof underneath is all you need to help measure. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm going to go from the inside to the out. You can see me crossing over inside out in the same pattern that I did the ribbon and the deco mesh. And see here, this is where I ran out and I have a gap. So I'll show you what to do. Don't worry, this does happen sometime with wreath making, not a problem. I'm gonna take the end of another piece and I'm just gonna overlap them like so. Press it into that wire and then twist it tightly down. Now you have a continued length of ribbon. See, no problem. Continuing around and we're almost done here. Once we get back to our starting place, we're going to make sure that it is twisted in tightly and then you can just trim that piece off. You can tuck it under whichever way you want to do it. Now we're going to start pulling these little poofs apart and I'm going to alternate back and forth. I'm using the word alternate a lot. So we have the burlap, the deco mesh, and the gold mesh right in that loop now we're going to do opposite we're going to pull to the outside the burlap piece then the deco mesh and then the gold then we're going to switch back to the original way you see here you see the little process so you can see each color continue around just like this and if you got those wrapped up tightly enough you should be able to move these with no problem they'll stay right where they need to stay continue around fluff them out you can see what a big difference and how much larger and thicker and more substantial this wreath is already just pulling these layers apart what do you think about these colors I don't usually do like the gold but this is really stunning together. I think it looks very elegant. So this is what it looks like when you get it all fluffed. Very pretty. I've chosen some greenery picks here. This is what we'll be using. But we're going to go ahead and cut our ribbons into 9 or 10 inch pieces here. I think I'm doing 10 inches. 9 inches. So, because we have 18, and I have three different types, we're going to do 18 pieces of each ribbon. I did run out of that gold mesh up there, so I went ahead and substituted a sheer ribbon that has some gold wire on the edges, and you'll see that shortly. Go ahead and dovetail all of your ends to give it a nice, beautiful, finished look. This is going to give it some texture. I'd also like to add at this point with these ribbons, um, it's really good to give yourself a lot of variety in your ribbons. Different textures, made of different materials. Wire always helps when, re when you're making a wreath. Um, it's not always necessary if you're using shorter pieces, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. So we're going to just layer these together just like you saw me do, like an X and then one in the middle. And then you can move those around and decide which piece you want to be on top, which you want to do in the middle. And I thought maybe that brown and bronze piece looked better in the middle. Kind of separate those two gold pieces. You really won't be able to tell once it's placed down in the wreath though. I'm going to use these handy little clamps that came from Dollar Tree. I use these for wreath making all the time. So here's that other ribbon I was telling you about. It's got the little wired edge. And then here's the original ribbon. So I have nine of each set. And we're just going to alternate them. So you're going to pull it out of the pick. It's just simply the little clip just holding it for you until you're able to get it where it needs to go. And you're going to pick your section starting on the outside. 
and you're just going to press it straight down in the center and twist it with a couple of loops. Then you're going to have your ribbon bundle right where it needs to be. You can fluff it out now. You can wait to the end to fluff it. You can do a little here, a little there, whichever way you want to do it. As long as it gets done before you hang it up. Okay, so we're alternating now. We're taking that other type of bundle and putting it to the inside. So all the ones with the sheer will be on the outside. All the ones with that gold mesh will be on the inside. Continue around. Make sure that you're grabbing all of those pieces, that you get them all in there where they need to be. You can move that stuff around, you know. Make sure you're finding it and placing it where it should be. And look how much more full it is already. Once it's fluffed up, it looks really, really nice. It is so high end. The result of this wreath even shocked me. So I hope that you stay to the end and you see this beautiful wreath. It's really got me rethinking the whole gold thing. Don't be concerned about those green pieces. They're a different color. I like it like that. I can tell exactly where I'm going, what I'm putting where. Those tinsel pieces will be wound back down into the frame or cut off, whichever way you want to do it. I'm going to use mine just as they are to hold down my greenery picks, so I'm not going to cut those off. I'm going to leave them just like they are. Continue all the way around. Fluff everything. Touch everything. Move everything around. Make sure you don't have any folded over pieces because sometimes they get jammed together. Just want to make it look pretty. Have intention with everything that you touch on your wreath. Just continue around. I know I'm not completely in, in your view there, but you get the idea. So I'm going to take these little pieces of greenery picks. I'm going to fold the stem on itself and twist it so that I have a little loop there. It just gives me a little something bigger to wrap around my wire so it won't slip out and I don't have to completely gob this thing down with a ton of glue. And hot glue can also damage your deco mesh, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to continue around. I think I had like mm, seven of these picks left over. I'm just trying to go through my stuff. If you have followed me for a while, then you have seen my wall of flowers and the amount of stuff I have collected and not used is ridiculousness. So I'm trying to go through and use up a lot of things that I already have. And we're going to continue around here just twisting and tucking in what we're not going to use because I'm not going to be needing those pieces of tinseled pipe cleaner for anything else on the bottom of this wreath. So it's time to tuck those things away and be done with it. Just going to fluff those in. I'm going to leave three pipe cleaners on the top untouched because I'm going to need a place to put a bow and I'm not sure where I want it yet. Now this is a pack of pine cone ornaments that came from Dollar General according to the packaging and my the person who donated all of the supplies to my channel um, this was in that bunch of stuff so I'm using it I'm happy about that I'm glad I'm getting to use those things the 8,000 subscriber winner is aware I've got her address and her package will be going out today on Monday so I'll be happy for her to get that. If you've received anything from my channel, please let me know that you have received it when you do receive it. Because I just want to make sure that it gets to you timely and that it does arrive at the right place. I'm not a scammer. You know, I want to help you and I want you to get your supplies quickly. So I, shipped, I ship it quickly to you. So just keep that in mind. Also, we're coming up to our 9,000 subscriber giveaway. It will be here before you know it because I'm only a few away from 9,000. The goal for me before 2022 is to have 10,000 subscribers. So I would love for you to join if you enjoy this channel. Um, I would love to have you here as part of our family. Moving right along, we're going to work on the bow. So we're going to just flip this bow over and I'm going to do like a 10 inch bow and this is so easy. You just flip this. This is just a scrap I had, you know, 
it, you maybe after Christmas you're running low on supplies, go ahead and do what you can for your winter decor. Go ahead and use those pieces. So I'm just gonna make a bow with this, just flipping it over, counting my little tails. I know that I want to have uh, two loops on each side. And then of course there'll be little tiny tails that are on there, but they aren't a big deal because you, we're gonna trim those down. You can leave them there. You can, you can treat them however you want, but you'll see that in a minute. So here we go. So this is a little over 10 inches. It's 11 inches. Then I'm gonna take this sheer striped ribbon that I have been using in the rest of the wreath. I'm gonna fold it over, what did I do? 10 inches there, and I'm gonna fold that over a few times. I think I end up with like six loops on this one, so fold it over several times. This one does not have any wire in it, but is a very good quality ribbon. I have no idea where it really originated from. I uh, got it at a thrift store, so I do not know. And that's 10 inches. Gonna cut that off, put it aside. And then that Celebrate Holiday, is that a Hobby Lobby ribbon over there? I don't know if that's, if that brand is, where does that come from? Or it even could be Target, I don't even know. But I'm just going to use it too. It is wired, it is beautiful snowflakes with gold and bronze and kind of copper. Really, really pretty. And it's on a, like a brown, a rust colored background, gorgeous. Okay. So now that we've got all of our bundles cut, we're just gonna fold this in half and then we're gonna notch it. It's a really thick bow and on really thick bows, the notching helps tremendously. So we're just gonna cut through the wire and just a little bit into the fabric. You can fill it with your scissors when you're cutting. I'm gonna fold this one over. There's no wire, but I still wanna make sure that it is able to be fluffed nicely along with the rest of the layers. So we're just going to do this for continuation. Folding this in half, we're finding the center, cutting through just a bit there. And then we're going to stack these pieces together. All right, I'll start off with jute. You're going to see a bow bow in just a second. This is why I don't like to use jute with bow making. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we're gonna go in the notches. I'm just slipping that straight down into the notches, like so. We're gonna do it with the next set, just like that, and then with the ribbon that is underneath it. Okay, so now you're gonna take your jute and tie it. I suggest a pipe cleaner, because let me show you what's gonna happen when you try to pull it tightly. And this happens a lot. All right, so that first of all, you've got to use your hands and really hold it and try to make your ties without moving your finger because as soon as you move your finger, it's going to slip out and it is not going to be as tight. So this is me attempting to keep it super tight, holding it with my other thumb, trying to move the knot and watch. Oh, but look, I recovered with a zip tie. That's right, a zip tie. Should have used it originally, but I didn't. Okay, so now I'm gonna zip that around the middle. It's gonna go right in the same notches that that Judy is underneath it. And then I'm gonna clip it off. And you are not gonna pull that thing loose. No, sir. So how we flip the bow is to start on the bottom layers. The thickest bottom layer, we're gonna pull those little loops out. This is very thin. You know, I keep saying burlap, but I believe that's like a linen blend. It's, it's thin, it's very pretty though. It's got just a, a light sprinkling of glitter or iridescence in it, it's really pretty. And you know how we do it from there. Start on the bottom, then you go up to the next row, and then we go to the top. And just pull it apart. Now this is where you can cut off the little tails that are left, or you can dovetail them like this. You can also cut them at a slant like this. Whichever way you want to do it. There's another little dovetail. Okay. If you're enjoying this video, I would love for you to give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and it is so very honestly appreciated. 
Now we're going to start on the tail of the bow. So we're going to use this ruler, which is the 18 inch ruler. And then I'm going to just kind of grab that 18 inch mark and then fold it over on itself. So this is going to give us 36 inches. I will end up trim trimming this in the end, but to begin with, I wanted to make sure I had plenty. I'm going to do it again so with this, so I have two pieces of this uh, snowflake ribbon. And then I'm going to do it again and hit the camera with the gold. And now this one, I only have a tiny piece left, so I'm going to fold it in half, kind of crease it, and then cut right down the crease. So now I'm going to have a ribbon with this pattern. It's easy with this. It's another way to stretch that ribbon. I'm just going to pull it down and then let it overlap in the middle so that it's the same length as the other ribbons on the end. What of that trickery? Did you see that? You can do that too. And then when you cinch it together, it's not gonna move. You can trim off the little pieces that are under there but just be sure that you got it on there really tightly before you do that or you will pull those two pieces that you put together completely out. So go ahead and cinch it, trim it up, and then this is what your tails are gonna look like. We're gonna go ahead and add them down. So the middle pipe cleaner on the top, I'm gonna go ahead and press that down and twist it around. My little helper's down there to the right. He had his fingers in the screen if you saw that. Now I'm gonna trim off these because I don't need it anymore. I could use it for the bow if I wanted to, but I'm gonna attach the bow in a different way. You can go ahead and attach all your stuff together before you put it on the wreath if you want, but I didn't do it that way. So you can just weave this since it's made out of wire straight through the back of your bow, and now you have a way to attach your bow straight down on the wreath. And this also will let you have the bow up a little bit higher than the wreath level or sink down a little bit deeper into the wreath, whichever one you like. You can just twist that back, fluff that beautiful bow. I think a funky bow would be really pretty on this wreath too. But I didn't have enough wire and it really needs uh, to be wired ribbon for a funky bow. So. I'm just pulling my tails out here and looking to see what I think I want to do because keeping in mind we have to fit that deer in there somewhere so we need to find a opening and a place where the deer can be seen so I'm just gonna trim up how I think this would look good here and there and I do like this shorter especially because there's going to be a deer in there and I, I really want him to be noticed in this wreath because you know I'm a rustic girl so I prefer all of my rusticness. And I know that I want him right here. He does have a hole under his chest which I don't show you there but I knew that a dowel rod would fit and that would be a perfect way for me to have him stand in there without gluing him onto anything. So it almost looked like he's leaping through the wreath and the greenery. So I've just poked it down into that wreath form. I just wove it. I know you can't see the bottom and I do apologize for that. So I've put it underneath the top one and then underneath the bottom one. And it's just kind of through the, just poked through there. Then I'm gonna use a pipe cleaner and just catch it around both sides so that it doesn't shift back and forth and add some hot glue to keep it still. And there he is leaping in the center of our wreath. Always, always, before you hang it, fluff it, put everything back where you want it to be, do your final critiquing and your final trimming, and then you'll be good to go. So here is my beautiful, elegant, rustic glam wreath what do you think about this piece it was quite a bit of work to make this wreath so it is not going to be something that I could just quickly throw in with other crafts so you get to have this one all by itself in this video thank you so very much for stopping by and for watching I appreciate you more than you know our family is growing and I could not be more 
excited about that. Genuinely, genuinely, I'm excited to have each and every one of you here. Keep on commenting. Keep on asking me questions. I love to talk to y'all. You can see that in the comment section. I love it. I love it. I hope everybody is well and enjoying the holidays in between time. Again, thanks for stopping by. And I will see you again real soon. Bye.